Congress is running out of time to fund the government for fiscal year 2022. That deadline approaches as Congress also works through big ticket items like the Defense Authorization Bill and Build Back Better. Jessica Clement is Staff Vice President of Policy and Programs for the National Active and Retired Federal Employees Association. Jesse, welcome. Hi, Mimi. Thanks for having me yet again to talk about the continuing resolution. There is a lot going on right now, but let's start with that continuing resolution. December 3rd, funding runs out. What's going to happen? That is next week for those of you keeping track at home who, like me, cannot believe this week is Thanksgiving. December 3rd is, in fact, next week. It is like Groundhog's Day, Mimi. Every time I come on the show, I feel like we're talking about government funding. Uh, right now, we have a disagreement on two things. The length of the stopgap, because there's going to be another continuing resolution. And then the top line numbers to move forward with the rest of F with FY22 funding bills. So if you look at the current CR, which expires on December 3rd, and next week is in fact December, uh, Congress has to figure out how long the next CR will go. I think it is disappointing that the conversation isn't how do we fund the federal government for the rest of fiscal year 20 2022. The conversation is how long will the next CR go? Um, and I think those discussions will ramp up next week, which, as you note, is also a very, very busy week for Congress. Well, let's talk about what effect that will have. So if we do a short term CR, what effect will that have if we do a longer term CR, you know, one that goes into February or March of next year, what kind of impact will that have on the government? I think the biggest impact on the government is taking them to the brink, right? Today is November 23rd. Congress is in recess this week. And Okay, Monday is November 29th. If they could get the stopgap measure, the continuing resolution passed on Monday, federal agencies have a lot more certainty as to what the rest of next week looks like. When you take them to the brink every time, like we discussed last time I was on your show, and you pass a continuing resolution, say on September 29th or September 30th, before the start of the fiscal year, or in terms of like this week, December 2nd or in the you know morning hours of December 3rd, that means very different things for federal agencies because they have to stop what they're doing and prepare for a possible shutdown. So that is the first issue, I think, in terms of how, um, how agencies are affected by these conversations. I think a December 17th um, deadline for the next CR, as Democrats seem to be pushing, is, okay, it's not going to get them very far, right? And we're going to have the same conversation two weeks from now. Federal agencies are going to go, great, now we're going to have this conversation getting closer to Christmas. You take it later into February and March, it's not good. A continuing resolution actually costs the government money, but at least there's a little bit more certainty in the process. And, you know, Democrats have won, are wanting to keep the pressure on Republicans by doing shorter term CRs. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we might end up with a series of short term CRs. But I want to ask you, Jessica, about the National Defense Authorization Act, the mm -hmm. NDAA. It passed the House. It'll be taken right. up by the Senate when they come back after Thanksgiving. What are you hearing about that? I think at the end of the day, the NDAA is historically a bipartisan piece of legislation. The things I saw this morning coming out of the newsletters is it's probably going to take the whole week in the Senate. There's going to be no shortage of amendments on things that are both related to defense and not at all related to defense. But at the end of the day, uh, the NDA is one of those things that very rarely, if ever, doesn't pass. But it's, it is going to take up a lot of time. Uh, do you do you have an idea of a timeline? It looks like um, they're expecting it to go almost the entirety of the duration of next week. So there will be any number of amendments, any number of senators wanting to posture on their own amendments um, and why the amendments of their colleagues are bad are bad ideas. But at the end of the day, the NDA usually does pass. And it's looking like at least, you know, as we sit here talking about it today, that it will be by the end of next week. Well, there's but still as you know, this NDA is getting a lot more coverage than, say, the continuing resolution is, which I could argue is certainly a bigger deal. <laughs> There's still the debt limit out there where the government yeah. would default on its financial obligations. What's happening with that? No, no shortage of things to talk about this morning, is there? Uh, the latest uh, information coming from the Treasury Secretary is that the new debt limit 
will be reached on December 15th. When Congress passed a sh like a very small increase in the debt limit, small relative to the debt, li debt limit, not small to people like you and I, um, that it, it was looking like the debt limit would go to honor around December 3rd, right around the same time as the CR. Uh, Se Treasury Secretary said the other day that now it's looking they'll be able to get closer to December 15th. That date will continue to be fluid as the government pays its bills. What impact, Jesse, will the, um, if at all, this debt limit, if it's reached, impact federal workers or retirees? It is going to impact everyone in this country ac acutely if, if we get to the brink and Congress does not raise that ceiling. Basically what it means is that the federal government can't pay its bills. So it will pay bills as it can, as they are due. What it means for say retirees, both federal retirees who rely on an annuity and senior citizens who rely on social security um, will depend on how, when their next payment is relative to December 15th, right? So if we reach the debt limit on December 15th, social security, federal annuities are usually paid. A federal annuity is around the first of the month. Social security is a little bit more staggered. Maybe Congress works this out by the time federal annuities need to be paid on January on or around January 1st. For federal employees, if they have a paycheck coming soon after that, it could very, very, very much mean that they don't get paid. All right, well, Jesse, thank you very much for being on the program and thanks for the update. Thank you so much for having me, Mimi.